Welcome everyone to the Customer Lifecycle Management webinar. Today we're going to be talking about lifecycle strategies of the customer journey. And joining us today are myself from CleverTap and Daniel from Adjust. So I'm Kara Dake. I'm the VP of Growth and Partnerships at CleverTap. I specialize in mobile user engagement and retention. I have a background in growth marketing, partnerships, biz dev, and finance. I'm an active supporter of the technology ecosystem and advocate for women in mobile and digital. And I'm a member of the Global Panels and Partnerships Committee of Embolden, which is an organization dedicated to connecting and empowering female leaders throughout the industry. Hi guys, I'm Daniel O. Oh. Uh, I'm a partner marketing manager here at Adjust. Um, throughout my career, I've worked mostly with B2B SaaS companies. So a lot of my career has been trying to leverage the data behind the marketing of these products and also trying to create good stories um, around them so that they're better positioned and engaging within the market. Um, I've worked as a market research analyst, a content marketer, and a product marketer throughout my career. And you know, the core the core thing that ties all of that together is just really my my interest and passion in trying to create good stories uh, behind these products that can be very technical and abstract uh, on the surface, but are very compelling once you get to the to the bones of them. So really happy to be a part of this webinar, and uh, thanks. So um, today's agenda, so we're going to first introduce uh, the kind of the intricacies of lifecycle and really go into the weeds as to why um, it's not just a point A to point B thing, that it's a very uh, intricate thing that requires a little bit more, more strategy and thinking behind in order to leverage uh, better for your, for your marketing campaigns and for the overall growth of your business. Um, then we're gonna understand a complete picture of strategies against specific life cycle stages, including industry benchmarks to compare to, as well as case studies to kind of give you a better um, view of how different businesses are approaching life cycle and using that to create better ROI and LTV. Uh, we're also gonna look at retention, what these benchmarks are for certain verticals, and also the importance of tracking uninstalls and reinstalls, um, especially when it comes to creating campaigns to both raise retention and to lower churn. Um, we're going to look at the average churn rates for these verticals one day and one week after the install. And then we're going to talk about the potential of these retargeted users from a revenue perspective. And a little bit uh, about CleverTap and what we're up to. We help marketing product and growth teams at B2C companies optimize their customer experiences at scale. So how we do that with, uh, at scale in real time is with our unified user data platform. We provide actual insights and segmentation of your users. And then from there, we offer a number of omni-channel engagement um, features like push notifications, in-app messaging, et cetera, to help you create personalized messages in, in real time to your customers. And here's some of our highlights of our, our customers here, here for you to view. All right, so adjust. We're a mobile measurement platform. Uh, we're we're focused on trying to put your entire marketing funnel into one unified platform. That starts with our core product of attribution. Um, we tie the users to the ads that they interact with, and that gives you better visibility into which campaigns and which partners are giving you the most ROI and you know, actually following through on the promises of growth. Um, we buttress that both by giving you unlimited data access and great analytics and reporting. Uh, both are very important to first inform the mobile marketer into which channels and which campaigns are not are just performing, but also into the post-install events and figuring out um, where the user is in that certain part of the life cycle and trying to inform other parts of the app experience based on that data. And this data can be you know, shown both in an aggregated form through our dashboard, it can be fed directly into your BI through callbacks, or it can be be through CSV exports to your preferred cloud cloud storage providers such as S3 or Google Cloud Storage. Um, on top of that, we also have an ad fraud protection um, suite. We call it the Just FPS Fraud Prevention Suite. Um, this is something that every MMP has because fraud is best fought at the point of attribution. Uh, our our fraud prevention suite, uh, we we believe it's one of the best out there in the market. We, it's fully preventative, and we built it with the aim of trying to take the, the pain point of dealing with ad fraud out of the hands of the mar mobile marketer and really just try to shield the mobile marketer from any type of clawbacks or refunds or making decisions based off of bad data, just 
removing all of that so that the mobile market can just focus on the core part of his job, which is growth. And um, we also have another product that's just very, very relevant to the topic that we're talking about today, which is our audience builder product. We have um, this product, which makes in-house audience building very easy instead of making it a multi-department you know, hurdle where you have to get engineers to give you device IDs and figure out the parameters which all these device IDs fall under and then sending that to the network, which can be a week long process depending on how many stakeholders there's involved. With the audience builder, you just set up parameters, the device IDs are already then collated, you send that via dynamic URL to the partner and that's it. It's a, it's a one to two hour process that makes audience building and segmentation really easy and on top of that, like all of our other features, it's a completely GDPR and e-privacy compliant, something that we take very seriously here at Adjust, especially as we're a German company um, and we built data privacy and data security into the DNA of all of our products. So um, now that you have a good idea of both what Clever Tap and Adjust do, let's go right into it. So the one thing that we want to to establish right now is that the user lifecycle is complex. It's not point A to point B. It's not add impression and click into install. There are so many other stages within the user lifecycle that you have to consider, um, especially when it comes to retention and churn, which we'll go into later. Um, as you can see through this diagram here, you know the point of install is actually really the first stage of that lifecycle where there's other re-engagements. There could be uninstalls involved and then subsequent reinstalls um, if there's at any point um, a user having the app installed but not interacting with it and then there are campaigns to bring them back into the fold that can be considered reattribution um, and there's other conversions that could be unique to your app depending on you know different events such as you know if you're an e-commerce app you know in-app purchase if you're a gaming app if the user reaches level 10 or 20 which by that time can you know establish stickiness if you're a travel app you know, other types of purchases or other types of engagements as well. So looking at user retention, these are kind of the five things you should ask yourself every time you want to just get a handle on retention. Um, first is, what is my retention and does it differ by user segment? Basically, it's really important to understand what the average retention rate is for your app. Um, and when you break your users down into specific cohorts, you can find exactly what, when they give up on your app and start to identify what what it, it exactly is that's making them leave. Um, the easiest way to do that is to measure retention quickly by, and that is by using the acquisition cohorts. Um, so basically, um, just taking a look at when these users uh, come into your app and seeing like a within a 30 day or 15 day or seven day period, however you want to define it, and just trying to figure out, uh, you know, when when the drop off actually happens. So you have to first establish that before you can even think about other ways to improve retention. Um, second question, are there trends to my retention metrics? Uh, basically, you have to see where the retention is going. You have to see the patterns and really get a handle on those. Um, it's better to build separate retention curves for each cohort, um, as I recommended before, to use cohorts to even get a handle on your initial retention. Uh, that way you can identify overall trends in your retention process so that you get a more granular view into the actual retention process um, based on these different cohorts and based on these different segments. Third question, uh, what features actually drive my retention? So retention is all about getting users back to the app. Um, so it's really important that we kind of make this, this uh, distinction right away. Retention does not necessarily equal engagement. Retention is all about users coming back on a regular basis. Um, it's not a targeted, you know, it's not a targeted engagement point to drive them back is the users actually coming back of their own will. So um, you have to figure out exactly what it is about your app that brings them back. If it's a if it's a game, it can be some type of, you know, the actual core of the game that makes it sticky and makes people engaged and want wanting to continue developing their their uh, their characters or their levels. Um, I know one one example for instance uh, with Candy Crush they have these daily rewards. So if you sign in, you get better and better rewards and that encourages customers to just get these, you know, power ups so that they can breeze through the levels and not get stuck. Um, so that's one way to, you know, define a feature that's specifically built to drive retention and keep users engaged. 
Fourth question, um, what behaviors lead to user retention? Basically, you have to find out why these users are staying in your app or turning out. And you have to find out which specific behaviors these individual users take and see how those affect retention of, other, of these users over time. You can do these through behavioral cohorts. So instead of looking at all your new users, you can look at all your new, new users who perform a specific action or set of actions and see how that's correlated with their retention. So with these behavioral cohorts, you can look for these features that bring users back to your app time and time again. And finally, when it comes to predicting long-term retention, you have to look at the relationship between certain user actions and retention that you can then identify as the main behaviors and actions that are correlated with long-term use. What, an example that we could use is how Netflix figured out how many episodes of a show that the average user would need to watch before they became hooked. Um, these two examples, for instance, Breaking Bad, you know, everyone knows that amazing show. It took just two episodes for the average user um, to get hooked. Uh, and this is to the tune of 70% of, of average Netflix users. So if you're, you know, within that 70%, you have to watch episodes one and two. If you've never seen Breaking Bad before, then it's a great chance that you'll just continue it throughout the entire series. For a different series, such as How I Met Your Mother, it can take up to eight episodes for the average watcher to become hooked and become invested in the show and start watching from beginning to end. So this is just an example to help you flesh out um, ideas or different ways to measure um, how long-term retention actually starts holding and stickiness is actually start established with your average user. Great, so now we're gonna dive into some specific uh, strategies in the media and travel verticals. So these are uh, examples and benchmark industry data. So they are apl applicable to these two industries, but wanna note that they they may also be applicable to, to other verticals that your apps are in as well. So um, just take note of that as we're giving examples. So first we're gonna go into media, OTT over the top, basically as a, as a description of um, a media type. And that includes type, you know, television, entertainment. And we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, what's happening in this industry in terms of how you can uh, push people in, along the, the customer lifecycle journey. Um, Couple of stats here from uh, the close to 100 plus streaming services in the US alone in this media ecosystem. It's a market that's showing a compound, compound annual growth rate of 17%, incremental growth of 64 billion, and we're seeing a number of 20 billion uh, smart devices in 2020 in this industry. So definitely rapidly growing and one that uh, we feel is, is really important to touch on today. So we like to talk about these moments in time where you can really um, move your customer along in their different in the experience they're having in the app. They're critical micro moments, and we pulled out some of the key micro moments within the media and OTT industries. So first, here looking at searching, one would be able to search by say a director or browse by a genre say in, in Netflix, as Daniel was mentioning, to find that that Breaking Bad, um, that, sh that show, that's a key micro moment where you can um, do it, employ a number of strategies to continue them in that process. Also discovering, so finding trailers and other types of content recommendations, viewing content, there's different, you know, length of viewing, um, types of viewers that you can, and segments of users that you can bucket into different groups, depending on their different you know, viewing um, habits. And then social sharing, this would be a way to drive um, further adoption and um, additional viewing types. So these are just a couple of the micro moments that you can start to look at. And we find that, you know, really the user onboarding uh, process is is huge. It's, it's important for every single, um, you know, type of app in every industry, of course, and where we usually see the most drop off. Uh, post download is within the user onboarding. So with a great user onboarding experience, you can actually improve your user adoption by seven times. So this is where we're gonna talk a little bit here about some strategies and how you can improve that user onboarding experience. So 
there's a number of user onboarding benchmarks, and we pulled this again from um, our specific report and those stats I gave you before. And so we're concluding these are industry benchmarks due to the size and scale of the data that we were able to analyze. And we see that just to give you some, you know, an idea of, of a range as you're looking into your own app, we see that 78% of new users are registering within a week of installing the app. And so it's really just looking to, to see what percentage of users are installing the app to create an account. And here you want to closely monitor the install to registration rate to optimize the user onboarding process. And then second industry benchmark here is it takes eight minutes on average for a new user to register after first launching their app. So this is a really a good indicator of the value a, a new user is seeing in your app based on that, that length of time. And of course, that's something you'd wanna, wanna optimize with a good user experience. So some of our clever tips here are to greet your users with a welcome message on that first app launch. You wanna nudge your users to register by an in-app message that focuses on subscription benefits or popular content. It's of course a really important part of any user experience um, and really highlighting the value proposition of your app right away. And then of course having a brief product tour um, that covers what's happening inside the app to give them highlights before they move further in the, in the the process is also um, a big driver for improving that user onboarding experience. Personalizing the content that they're going to receive is um, is something that our platform can can help you you all do, and and it's really um, becoming super data driven at this point, where you're able to segment your users and identify specific types of content that are relevant to your users. So this is something that you of course want to do, and is is very tailored in the in the media industry um, as well. Great, so now touching back into more industry benchmarks around the user onboarding experience, which of course is, is key, we're seeing in, uh, in media that 20%, 26% of new users are engaging with media at least three times in the first month. So this is something again to, to, to see where you line up against this. And 72 hours are spent on average um, for users to play media three times and move to the next engagement pay phase. So these are really, you know, specific um, phases to look at and benchmark your your interaction against and see how often your users are acting um, with your content and how frequently this is happening. So clever tips here, ask your users about their favorite genres and categories to start delivering a personalized experience. Before you have any in real information, you can start to just ask ask them and, and then they'll, they'll let you know. Um, and then from there, you'll be able to see what content they're actually engaging with. And then based on their psychographic and demographic data, you want to make recommendations of other types of content that are useful for them um, based on their own browsing and interaction data, as well as, as I mentioned, um, the other segments and data, that data around the segments that they also fall into. And then you'd wanna prompt your users for to opt in for push notifications to increase reachability. This is really a, a key engagement strategy that we see is, is the most is often the most effective and widely used. Um, so optimizing for them receiving as, uh, push notifications is, is, a, is a huge driver for engagement. Another key strategy here is to keep your users engaged is to keep is to convert your freemium watchers into premium subscribers. So just noting that um, if this is something that you are employing with your with your media app that um, we'll get into here a couple ways to drive engagement to help you to do so. All right, and we're still on this user onboarding onboarding tip here, as it's so important. And we're seeing that um, on average, in the industry, 5% of uh, users are on average click through um, to push, push notifications. That's the average click, click, click through rate. So not um, super high here. So looking at, there's a lot of opportunity to really improve that number. And we see that 16 is the average number of app launches per user in a month. So actually that's pretty high number if you think about it. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities to, to really continue to, to keep driving, driving that number up. And so a couple of our tips here are to 
nudge users to resume any abandoned, abandoned media that they had last played to increase the content completion, completion rates. We also want to use in-app notifications with content recommendations on app launch. So that's really um, going to, you know, right, right as they open up the app, provide them with, um, with ideas for what they might want to engage with based on their previous browsing and viewing history, as well as demographic and psych psychographic data. And then finally, want to facilitate new content discovery, right? So based on um, previews triggered on the app launch. And so we have a number of features that can help you optimize what are the best campaign send times to do so. And of course, you want to use an omni-channel engagement um, campaign strategy to keep your users coming back for more. So as I mentioned, <clears throat> some of the engagement features that you'd want to look at are push notifications, in-app messaging, SMS, um, email. If you have a, a web experience, you can utilize web pop-up and web push. And then uh, Facebook remarketing is another strategy we see is really strong. So it's really about pulling the whole picture together for, for your users in terms of engagement to drive retention as a part of this overall customer lifecycle management strategy that we're talking about. Okay, and so now we're moving into actually the retention pieces. And so we're seeing that 24% um, of um, the travel industry apps that we're using have uh, 24% is the average stickiness rate, which is basically how many users are engaging, um, how often users are engaging with a product or a feature. So the higher your app stickiness quotient, the more frequently your mo monthly active users are returning to your app. So of course, you'd really want to have that to be a high number. Um, so some ways to increase that in the media industry are by notifying your users of new releases, and reminding them to resume unfinished content. You can nudge your users to add content to their watch list and then remind them of what items are um, have not been watched on that watch list. And then you can also incentivize your users to commit to longer subscriptions by offering discounted or access to exclusive content. Okay, and so tackling churn. So why are your users not engaging this is of course um, a huge issue and we see that 67 percent of users are churning within the first two weeks um, in the media industry so a lot of opportunity to improve in that um, as is the case across all verticals in the mobile app space uh, but that's a, a number that i wanted to share to kind of give you an insight into you know comparison and, and how your app is performing so reasons for why one may in, uninstall or churn can really vary. Of course, it's UX and UI, so working with your product team to determine where those um, drop-offs, why those drop-offs might be occurring. Of course, functionality and performance of the app are, are, are big, so working with your technical team on that. And then the engagement experience, which is what we've been talking about um, previous to this and often where we see the most opportunity. And, you know, it's really great because you've got tools like CleverTap and Ingest that can help you identify where the performance of your engagement can um, can be improved. So if your users have uninstalled, um, there are points into how to get them to reinstall. This is a really um, strong engage reengagement technique that we like to 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 note to let users um, let you guys know that you can can work towards. And we have features that help you uh, identify when um, users are are uninstalling. So Going back to this in the media industry here, we're seeing that within the first 30 days of the first app launch, 35% um, on average of users are uninstalling. And then 20% um, are is the average reinstall rates within 30 days of app uninstall. So actually that's a pretty significant number than an opportunity to see that there, you know, some of the users may have uninstalled um, but potentially like to, to do so again. So ways that you can improve this, these rates are to eliminate the friction points um, between your apps by tracking user behavior uh, path analysis tools, such as our Clever Tap Flows features. You can also win back users with time-sensitive targeted promotional offers, and then request user feedback to understand the reason for uninstalls. We see this to be 
really effective where you can actually you know, send a user um, an email asking for with a survey embedded in the email asking for, for feedback on to why they uninstalled and this may actually drive them to to reinstall as well as give you that critical feedback to help um, improve your potentially feature performance as well as the UI and UX experience. All right, cool. So I know we're going deep here into this, but this is what we we wanted to create an experience here for you guys in the webinar to be able to give you some really deep insights into these verticals. And now I'd like to jump over into the travel sector, which is another really um, interesting vertical, one that's growing quite a bit. We're seeing um, massive growth actually, um, expected to be over a, a 1 billion in, in two, 2022. Mobile travel bookings have increased over 230%. This is a little bit old data, but um, we're continuing to see this growth. And over 5% of all apps are travel apps. So actually, that's a, a, a pretty large number, and we're seeing that it's a very aggressive marketplace for, um, for market share. So that's why we want to dig a little bit deeper here with you guys and help you get ahead of the curve. And for this data, just to note, we analyzed 55 billion events. Um, and their performance on more than a billion devices in 2018 to pull together this data for you, as well as our clever tips to help you optimize. So going back to that user onboarding um, period, which is in time, timeline, which is really important for, for you guys again, um, wanted to note that the, due to the sheer number of travel apps available, app-based travel business as really have their work cut out for them when it comes to attracting and retaining users. And so actually the average travel app loses 64% of its users after 30 days. That number increases to 76% after 60 days. And then after about three months, that number has um, moved to 82%. So this is again, just you know noting some challenges as we know is across the board. Um, and here are some ways to optimize that onboarding experience. So opt-in rates really signify this, the percentage of users who have given you the permission to reach out to them via various channels, as I've mentioned, like in-app, push, email, SMS, et cetera. Um, we are seeing that 63% of first-time users for these marketing campaigns opt in to the experience. And so ways to improve that are to welcome your new users with a personalized in-app message on their first launch. You can also promote opt-ins by conveying the value notifications provide to users, as we talked about before, really showing them and telling them why they, they would it would be optimal for them to um, experience the notifications, especially in the travel industry, as you can see how potentially useful and timely um, these notifications will be to their experience. And then understand where your users are most active in your app to engage them at the right time. So uh, 18 minutes is the average time that new users take to log into the app. So that number could definitely be optimized. And so you wanna decrease that time to first log in. Ways you can do so are to welcome users with email drips that guarantee a response. You can also, of course, A-B test your creative in both the in-app and email welcome messages. And then use social logins to reduce time to value and get to that. And you'll also be able to pull in their detailed profile information, which will help you um, optimize their the user segmentation and, and other pieces of the, the app experience. Okay, so ways to um, drive users to engage. I'm gonna mention these here. And of course, there's a lot more that you can look to in our travel report. You can send offers and coupons to first-time users via SMS. You can utilize uh, their location and send personalized recommendations based on the specific region and language and time zone that they're in. This is, of course, hyper important for a, a travel industry, a travel experience. And then also really seeing that's um, going to optimize their experience by utilizing a deep link, which is a link that's embedded into the channel that you've reached in, whether it's a push notification or email. And that will that deep link takes the user directly back into the page that they were on before, the booking page, um, for example, versus having to navigate through all the different 
um, pages. And I don't know about you, but when I'm late for a flight, I want to go right back into that page that I'm into to, to, to continue to, to, to check in, for example, versus going through all the other experiences. So those are some ways to optimize the onboarding to engagement experience. Okay, so click-through rates. Now these are rates that help measure the effectiveness of your marketing campaigns and help you understand if your messages are generating the response that you needed, are they prompting users to open your app? Okay, so we're seeing eight around 8% 8 um, average click-through rates for campaigns in the travel industry. So ways to increase these numbers are to find the optimal day and time to engage with your users. Um, so we were able to see that these click-through rates are higher on messages sent between 8 and 11 p.m. People likely plan planning out their travel for the next day or the next week as they're winding down their day. Definitely want to make your user feel valued and personalize the message based on, you know, the specific experience. So we see when you mention someone's name, um, you in, in, in a message, and if you, you know, mention something that they were one of their interests based on their previous experience. That's this is what you want. You want to get to the most, you know, personalized, customized experience as possible, where it feels doesn't feel spammy. Um, also interesting is you can use an alert sound in your message, which really reinforces brand recall. So that's that's pretty cool. Again, this is like engaging them in their different senses and different ways to to feel as a part of this brand experience. Now, uh, cart abandonment rates pretty high in travel as people are likely, you know, browsing on different platforms to, to, to get the best experience and best pricing. So a lot of opportunity to reduce this card abandonment and, then, and the ways you can do that are to analyze the different paths that users are taking inside your app to resolve any friction points. That of course goes without saying and what we talked, of, talked about before in the product experience. You also want to look to see what is this golden window of time to engage and engage and bring back dropped off users. This is something we look at a lot and similar to the micro moments, we see that there are specific window time windows where, where they're, they're really critical um, where you can see that if you actually send them say a personalized message within that window of time, say it's, say you find, and our tool can help you find that what this time window is, but say it's, 15 minutes is really this time window that they're going to, you want to remember that, uh, you want to remind your users that they were about to make a purchase. And if we're, if, if say you see 13 minutes have come by and they haven't engaged or, or um, completed their purchase, at that point you could send them a personalized offer to drive them to do so. So then you've got that, you've, you've identified that golden window and then sent them a, a custom offer and they will be much more likely to, to, uh, to complete that activity. So these are all some really detailed but super important ways to, um, to optimize this engagement experience. Now we're moving further into that life cycle stage. We're moving from engagement to retention. And we're seeing that about 63% of users um, that have converted and, and, and used and are in the app will move to the retention stage. So that's pretty powerful. And some ways to do continue to drive users to retention are to learn about the user preferences and interests using psychographic segmentation. So this goes beyond just demographic demographic segmentation, but it's things you know more personal interest um, interest based um, uh, profile information about a user. You can understand what what categories are are popular to them that drive conversation. And then focus on the users with the highest chance of being retained, um, which you can put into a bucket called a potential loyalist user segment. And finally, some more ways to increase your user re retention where we're seeing, um, you know, average stickiness rate of about 28% in, in the travel industry. So oppor opportunities to increase this app st stickiness, create user segments based on in-app behavior, and create automatic campaigns that engage users who are about to drop off, and then tell inactive users um, you miss them and inform them of new features via personalized email. Ways to improve retention rates, which we're seeing are close to 50% um, after 30 days in the travel industry, which I mentioned. You want to man man monitor your trends, use cohort analysis to compare different user groups, 
and then tap into those omni-channel campaigns, which I mentioned before, um, to reach your users at the right channel at the right time. We're seeing about 35% of users are churning in two weeks. So um, really understanding what users are up to before they, before they un un install your app and remind them of uh, unexplored features or benefits of your app or, or ways to prevent that. Back to that uninstall, um, you know, scenarios that I talked about before in the media industry, those are pretty much, pretty, pretty much the same as I mentioned before. If you want to go deeper into this, um, you can check these out in our travel report. Great, thank you, Kara. Those are some awesome tips. Uh, definitely, definitely very helpful in trying to head off churn and try to increase retention so uh before us right now we have uh three major verticals here e-commerce entertainment and travel split across three of the major geos europe north america and apac and as you can see here um churn is pretty much uh across the board going to be around 40 to 40 to 50 percent um within the first seven days for instance you see how e-commerce apps in europe there you go from 19.98% of users are engaged within the first day, but then comes in day seven, that, that number drops to 11.93. And that's one of the better uh, one of the better stats that you see across here. Because if you look at how travel apps do in North America, it goes from 14.51% 14 .5, 14 on day one down to all the way to 7.41% uh, on day seven. So that's more than a 50% churn rate. And there's a lot of different factors that go into it. Um, that Kara also mentioned. Um, I mean, it could be anything from a user installs a travel app in North America, they just want to look up flights for their vacation or family trip or whatever. And then once they actually get that flight booked, um, there's no reason for them to come back to the app. So there's this is a this is something that's you know across across all industries, um, across all verticals. And the stats here were gathered were both um, on Android and iOS and were gathered uh, last year um, in Q4. So, so pretty recent numbers. And it gives you a good idea of the issue that churn is. Um, it's not specific to any one vertical, but it can be something that, that can be fixed. So if you look into churn, um, on average, almost 80% of users have churned the day after the app install. And this is you know, looking, at our, looking at our numbers here. And uh, when it comes to seven days, only 12% of users are still seen as active. Now, um, there's a lot of different reasons why people why people churn, and Kara, you know, did a great job of, you know, exploring all these different ways as to why app friction or certain app experiences um, drive users away from the app. Uh, what we want to do here is we want to not just, uh, you know, tell you an issue that you guys probably already know looking at your dashboards. Also, just try to change the thinking around churn. So churn isn't supposed to be a, a way of life or just something that has to be fixed on a product. It can also be an opportunity to get these users back into the fold. Uh, as you can see in the dark in the dark purple portion here of the graph, um, churned users are, you know, by far the the vast plurality of all the users that are that have gone through the app within your first seven days, and they don't have to stay churned. They can be brought back through you know reengagement campaigns and through all these other engagements that Kara mentioned earlier. Now, looking into churn, um, if users churn, do they ever come back? The answer here is yes. Looking at our numbers here, um, an estimated of 17% of churned users do return to the app after a two month break. Um, after three months, it goes to almost 11%, and after six months, it goes down to 4%. So there is a, a rate of diminishing returns there. But um, this is looking at you know the industry as a whole so this can be both users organically coming back based on um, my past example for instance like if you downloaded a travel app you got that trip and then you don't really have any reason to go back to it until you have another trip then that could be another organic reason to come back um, if you're if you're a gaming app someone can pick it up for a week or two kind of get bored with it and then you know they might be stuck in a situation where they need a game that can play on airplane mode. I mean, this is something that I run into a lot uh, with my own gaming apps on my phone. Like I don't pick them up unless I'm on a, I'm on a six hour flight and I need to kill some time. So all these different ways, and there's also, you know, re-engagement campaigns uh, involved here as well. So if there are targeted efforts to bring these users back into the fold, there are, there is evidence here that churn users do come back. They don't have to stay churned. They don't leave and ride off into the sunset and never come back. There's an opportunity to get these users back. 
So this goes back into the performance tracking portion of it. Um, so you have all these great campaign ideas to get these users back, but in order to really track the performance and the efficacy of these campaigns, you have to figure out first when, how, and why these users uninstall. And then once you have that data, and once you go back to the networks and say, hey, these users are uninstalled, I want to retarget them and get them back into the app, um, you have to then figure out how good these campaigns are by tracking their reinstall rate. And this is, this is especially important uh, when you're trying to vet your different campaigns and try to create quality control on these campaigns to make sure that they're working the way that you intend them to, especially if you're sinking money into these campaigns. Uh, so in order to really tap into these churn users as an opportunity to improve the LTV and ROI and to get the type of precision targeting you need, uninstall and reinstall tracking is very important. And these are the two points of, of tracking that you need in order to get really good funnel and trend analysis and really inform your decisions on how to approach these churn users and how to figure out the most efficient way to get them back in. So um, when it comes to churn and retention, it's really all about influencing and engaging users throughout the app journey. And um, I mentioned before we had an audience builder tool. Uh, once you power that with your uninstall and reinstall data, you get first you get deep insight into when and why your users churn and what makes them come back. So using the uninstall and reinstall portion, you can figure out um, first when the user uninstalled, and then that gives you a timestamp of the type of events that they went through to before that uninstall happens. So you can then figure out patterns to see if a certain part of your app experience is driving these users away. Um, and also once these, once you get the reinstall data, you can figure out what type of campaigning and messaging and engagements actually make them come back. Um, on top of that, so once you have these data and you have all this information and are able to really apply it to your, to your marketing messaging, you can then increase user LTV and retention rates by reactivating your churned users and really try to optimize both your app experience using uninstalled data to make sure that these users don't churn. And when they do, you understand which campaigns are actually bringing them back. And that also leads to increased ROI, um, not only by you know, improving your, your re-engagement campaigns, but you can also go back to the point of, of initial install and optimize to the channels and networks that drive you the most engaged users that don't drop off. So you can then use that uninstalled data to find out which networks are giving you the users that don't that don't churn that they that they have the lowest uninstall rate they give you the users that are quality users that stay engaged and the type of the users that actually drive the growth of your app and then with our audience builder you can then uh, create highly targeted audiences based on the users placed within the funnel so like i said before uh, the tool itself really just makes it easy to segment these users and create these extremely targeted audiences that you can then send off to the network and partner and then provide hyper-targeted messaging that will actually get them back in. And then you can then sync all the uninstall and reinstall information to your own CRM system to power up your own engagement strategy. So thank you for sitting through all this. Uh, it's a lot of information, but just to kind of close this out, so just to introduce who we are, we're, we're at about you know 300 plus employees, uh, which is pretty good for a mobile measurement partner. Uh, we're at 15 offices. We just opened one up in Tel Aviv thanks to our recent acquisition of Automodify. We have about 25,000 plus apps tracked out there in the ecosystem and 42% of market share based on ad spend measurements. So basically we looked at the total number of ad spend that was being out there and seeing how much of that was being run through a just SDK, which is how we arrived at that number. So we have a pretty good pretty good hold on the market when it comes to actual ad dollars and ad, ad campaigns being run through our system. Um, as something that we pride ourselves on, we track about 400 plus billion data points per month. Um, something that it's a huge scale, something that, you know, comes with the territory of, being, of tracking every single touch point that happens within the engagement cycle and also, you know, all the post install events as well. And right now we're at about a billion daily use, daily active users being tracked. So it's a lot of different people interacting with apps that have our SDK in it. So that's all. So we have that kind of data rushing through our system and giving us the kind of insight to allow us to provide this kind of information and come to the conclusions that we have. Uh, we also operate at a pretty large scale. We've got over 8,000 customers, reach over a billion devices. 
$2 billion in incremental revenue and $25 million campaign cent per month. 